Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, December 4th, and we're going to get started with some jokes. Hope that you're working on the rebuses, and uh, let's do some work because we have our, uh, today we did a little bit of review in class for our mid-quarter two quiz on Tuesday to make sure everybody can get uh, mastery or above mastery. All right. Why was the equal sign so happy? And I feel like I've Meant, I've mentioned another joke about equal sign, but not this one. Because it found its match. Because equal signs means that it's the same on both sides. 6 plus 6 is 12. 15 minus 3 is 12. It met its match. You know, that makes people happy. Okay. And obviously, numbers aren't people, but you get it. Okay. Um, interested to see your thoughts about these readers. Um Remember to pay attention to location of the word, above, under, over, you know, use prepositions, uh, how it's spelled, and then, you know, what's in between, or if you could figure out if it's got, if it's forward, backward, you know, different things like that. All right. And then I think that's it. Yeah. So put those answers on your homework and, uh, and we'll get you some points and just recognize you as being awesome. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So this is, I think, lesson seven. Yeah, I think we're doing this on two yesterday. So we did this Tuesday in class. Um, your homework better be next level. Um, don't, don't do whack homework. Basic is basically whack. Um, and we're just like continuing to build our fluency and multiplying multi-digit whole numbers. And you can put the rebus answers here. Number, I don't know what numbers they were, but there were two of them. Okay. All right. I think we're still working with multiplying and dividing by powers of 10, but really just multiplying. So now this one asks you to compare using less than, greater than, or equal, which means match. <laughs> Okay, so let's check this one out. One, two, three, 24. And then one, two, 24. Ooh, this one's bigger. 24,000 over 2,400. This one. And 18 and, ooh, they're equal. That's a match. Okay, next few, one, two, three. And then, so it's 35,000 and, ooh, 40, but it's only 4,000. So this one's more, greater than. And then I have six times 700, one, two, 4,200. And then I have seven times eight, is that 56? And then two zeros. Okay, that's more. All right, so... We're just using our ability to move along the place value chart because multiplying and dividing by powers of 10 is awesome. And it really helps us know what's coming. All right. So there's a lot of work going on in this problem. These homeworks, it's four problems, but they're detailed. So let's not miss anything. All right. Here we go. General admission to the American Museum of Natural History, which is an awesome place to go, is $19. It is no longer $19. I think it's way more. If a group of 125 students visits the museum, how much will the group's tickets cost? So remember, if we have the number of, uh, like just say students, right? Student groups, students, times the price of one ticket, we will get the total cost. That's just like how it works. If you um, stood up the 125 students in a row and said 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 125 times, you will get the total cost. So let's do it. One, two, five times 19. Oh, I went a little bit toward the top here. Maybe you're better than me and you organized yourself better. 22, 9, 10, 11. Done, 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 done. Done, 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 done. Five, two, one. Okay, here we go. Five, I got a little bit sloppy. Oh my gosh. When I used to do um, field trips 
um, years ago. Uh, that would be a really good cost for a field trip. All right. So let's see. 125 students at $19 each costs $2,375. Mm. Oh my goodness. Now the group is also purchasing IMAX tickets. Yikes. So much money. Um, oh my God, only four dollars. This is amazing. Okay. What is the total cost for all of the tickets? Write an expression that shows how you calculated it and then solve it. All right. So it's an additional four dollars per student. So let's go back up to the number of students. Right, times the cost per one student. Now that's still 125, but then that's now 19 plus four. So this is my expression. And I know that 19 plus four is 23. So I'm gonna go back up here to my grid and I'm gonna do 125 times times my $23 now because I have the total number of students and the cost per one. So 15. Okay. And then 10, 4. Okay. 5, 7, 8, 2. All right. So now cost, I have to, if I have a word problem, you have a word answer, word answer. Okay, so uh, 125 students at $23 each, each is 2,875, right? Oh, still pretty good. All right. Now, we're getting into some area problems with multiplication. Get used to it. That's just the way it goes because area is one of the most realistic ways we can practice multiplication in real life. All right, carpet costs $16 a square foot. So $16 equals one square foot. All right, so that's this, 16 bucks. That's a lot. Um, and a rectangular shaped bedroom measures, ooh, 14, it's a nice and long, big bedroom, 14 by 13 feet. Okay, how much would it cost to carpet the entire bedroom floor? Well, we need to know the area times the cost. So we need the total area times the cost of one square foot. And that equals total cost. And the total area means square feet. Okay. All right. Let's just organize this a little bit better. All right, here we go. Let's find the area. 14 times 13. That's length area is length times width. I have 12, three, four. Okay. And this is, I was done with that two. All right. So there's 182 square feet. So I'm going to have 182 square feet times yikes, $16 per foot. Done, done, done. Whoa, it's a lot of money. Okay. So I am going to get this bedroom costs $2,912 to carpet. Now, normally in this sentence, I would say to carpet 182 square feet, but like I wrote all of that here and I have words in my problem and my solving. And so that's just gonna make all the difference. So then I don't always have to have it in my final answer if I have it in my work and that goes for when we type it on the like computer also, like this should be what you see on your paper. And then we just type it into the 
computer like, you know, like a copy machine. All right, let's see what's going on. Jason's buying a car, okay? And he's paying for it in monthly installments, payments, that's called leasing. Each installment, whoa, expensive cars, $567 per month. After 48 months, he still owes. Oh, total price of the vehicle. All right, so we're gonna have the number of months times the amount of one month payment um, plus the unpaid amount equals vehicle cost. All right, so there's a couple things going on there. Number of months, 40. Oh, you know what? Let's do 567 first. 567 times 48 months. So much money. 56, 48. 45, 28. Okay, so this is what he paid, paid, but we know that he still owes, so 20, 7,216, he still owes one, two, five, zero. He owes this still. So I'm gonna add up together what that's going to cost. All right, so the car costs, costs $28,466 after Jason pays what he owes after the 45 months, 48 months. Okay. But because I have all this writing on my paper already, and then if I was typing it, then um, I don't have to have everything in my answer because I've written all of my understanding and my thinking. So, um, you know, we, we really want to do that. All right. For a Betty. Betty saves $161 a month. That's really good for Betty. Listen to Betty. She saved $141 less each month than Jack. Jack is an even better saver. Listen to Jack. How much money does Jack save in one month? All right. So if Jack uh, saves $141 more than Betty... I need to add 161 plus 141. So Jack saves $302 per month. Okay, and the, that slash or, you know, it just means per. If Jack continues to save that same amount of money per month, pay attention to the word month, how much money will he save in a two year period? Well, I know one year is 12 months. And I know um, two years is double that. So it's going to be 24 months. So if he saves $302 each month for 24 months, so the amount, amount saved in one month times the number of months, that's going to be your total amount. So I was going to just write amount, total amount. And that's just like fundamental math. If you know the amount of one of something and you're multiplying it by a bunch of things, you're going to get the total or like all of it. All right. Eight. Boom, four, zero, six. Wow. Jack saved so much. Okay, and now I've written all this down. It's a word problem. I have to have a word answer. So Jack saves $7,248 in two years. Good job, Jack. Well done. All right. Hope he has it in like a high interest paying loan. I mean, a high interest paying bank account. <laughs> all right, everybody. Have a good night. See you.
tomorrow.